What's going on? It's Jason Heath here, and I've spent the last couple of weeks trying out some new gear, including the H2N 4K. I have really been digging this device. I've used it in a bunch of different circumstances. I've also been comparing it to some other gear I have, like the Q8, which is also by Zoom. Some of my higher end gear, like Canon cameras and lenses, even my old iPhone. And so we're gonna take a look at that different A-B comparisons, and much more in this video. There's a lot in this one, folks, so be sure to click around in the description below if you wanna skip to different parts of the video and see the Q2N 4K compared to any other gear. So we're gonna go through and do an unboxing video from a few days ago, then get into how this stacks up to other devices like the Q8 and the M50 and even the iPhone a little bit. We're gonna use Zoom video conferencing so you can see how that works with and without the base, how it works as a vlogging camera, how image stabilization works, all sorts of good stuff like this. And by the way, if you like these more tech-oriented reviews, I think of them as like tech for teaching, we have a playlist, I'll link up to it up top, and you can dig into all sorts of other gear-related things things that'll help you in your music making. I've been hearing so many good things about the Zoom Q2N, and I'm really convinced that it might be the musician's perfect device for doing live streaming, for recording, for wide angle shots with quality audio. I have the Zoom Q8 that I've used, and I'm going to do some coverage of that at some point. I'm really on the fence about this device, and it's around $400, so it's kind of a chunk of money, especially given the low video quality that I get on this. Audio is great, video is not so great, but this Q2N 4K from Zoom really looks like it's got some potential. So I love right up on the front it says the camera for musicians. Okay, so that's a good sign already. And it's got uh, an audio input, it's got headphone output, it's got the speakers built on top. Looks like a great, uh, great device. So we're gonna open this up and see what we got here. So we got a few instructions. So we'll put those over there. Camera just comes in like so. And what a cute little device. Look at this. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous little camera at. <laughs> uh, so you're gonna to wanna to have a tripod for this because this is gonna be pretty low. I do have a tripod out somewhere here. So I've got just one of these little uh, Joby-ish things that I can use and I can just screw it on right here, no big deal. So we can get it off the table just a little bit and demo it. So there we go, and it looks pretty good already. I'm feeling very positive about this. We also have in the box, let's see, what else have we got here? Got some uh, AA batteries. So, and I do remember it runs up AA, not rechargeable, I believe. And we've got what looks like the world's smallest lens hood. Adorable, look at that. By the way, the Q8 also comes with a lens hood, slightly larger, and that's gotta be what this is, right? Uh, yep, you can just put that on just like so, and you get a little lens hood, which will help with flare from lights and that kind of thing. And then what have we here? Looks like we got a, probably a little uh, lens cover, I'm guessing, that you can attach just to keep dust and the like off. So on the side of the zoom, we've got a uh, micro, is that HDMI, whatever that port is right there. And then we've got a uh, micro USB, it takes both. We've got a volume control for the microphones, just like the Zoom Q8 or the Zoom H6 or the other various devices I've owned from Zoom. Audio up and down for the the headphones right here, and I'm gonna pop it open and get the batteries in. The batteries are quite simple. You just pull this little thing right here, and then you got room for the two AA, so I'll put those in there. I am just so charmed at the tiny size of this. This is actually much smaller than I was expecting. So a zoom is very simple to use in my experience. I probably don't have to look at any instructions. There's probably a power button, he says, hopefully, somewhere here. Oh yeah, right here, the play button is the power button, and so we've just powered it on. I'm gonna say, in the, you press okay, you press the red record button, so I'll do English, uh, date and time, and it is not a touch screen, uh, which is fine, we don't need that. The Zoom Q8 is a touch screen, um, but the H6 and the other devices I have are not. And it's good to set this date and time just so you have that uh, timestamp when you record things, and we are at five, 15 p.m., which is a little late for me. I'm usually 
done with my work by then. And here we are, it's the Q2N 4K and it is showing me the room right here. I'm getting some audio right off of here. And let's do, uh, let's see what we got in terms of memory cards. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. Oh man, this is simple. Okay, turn this off. And where does the memory card go on this, on this little guy? Must be in the batteries. I guess I didn't read the fine print. I didn't realize it recorded to micro SD, which is a bummer. I have one micro SD card, uh, so, and I don't know that I have much room on here. I guess we'll find out. All right, micro SD memory card ordered. So I have a whopping three minutes of available record time on this micro SD card that I have. Don't know how big that is, so that'll limit my testing with this device for a few days. But I can use this top button, the upper left button to cycle between. So I've got 4K 30 frames per second, 4K 24 frames per second cinema. That's cool. Uh, then 1080 60 frames per second. That's cool. So you can do some slow-mo sort of stuff that you can, that you can, so we're just, we're not thinking about webcam right now. We're just thinking about uh, just shooting and then 30 frames per second, 1080p and then 24 frames per second. And then you can all the way down to 720 if you want. And you can just use a USB mic. The question I wanna know that I'm going to test out is does this work as a webcam and a USB mic simultaneously? Now, the Zoom Q8 does not, which is a bit frustrating, but I'm looking for a solution that lots of people can use. So we'll see if this can fit the bill for that. So let's check out the video recording capabilities of the Q2N. I have this kind of in run and gun vlogging mode, holding it just about a foot from my face with the wide angle lens, and I'm shooting in 4K right now, 30 frames per second. Let's drop down to 10. 1080p. So here's 24 frames per second and 1080p. And to me, this still looks quite good. So you'll save a little bit of room, but obviously you can go up and get that 4K footage too. And the other beautiful thing is that you can do 1080p 60 frames per second. So you can do all sorts of cool slow-mo stuff and really get some cool footage if you're trying to up your YouTube game. Here we are in 4K, 24 frames per second, and I've noticed I've already drained about a third of the battery, even though I've only used this for maybe a half hour or so, 45 minutes. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe the batteries that they supplied weren't the best, but we'll, we'll check that out. So that's not great battery life so far. Not sure how this is holding up in the varying light conditions as I walk around, uh, but you can see just sort of this space has some great sunlight and uh, we can go outside and see how it performs outdoors. But of course we get some shadows in this place place too. So here we are outdoors. You can see how that looks. And then backlit, I'm sure doesn't look great, but this just kind of gives you a sense of how it sounds, obviously using this as a microphone right now, and how it looks with various lighting conditions. Okay, so this is the Zoom Q8. When I've had very mixed impressions about this camera over the past year or so that I've had it, I've been kind of getting back into it. It has some real strengths. One is this flip out screen. It really makes it feel like a more professional camera. It does kind of bring you back to the late 80s or something like that when I was first getting exposed to video cameras because it kind of looks like a camcorder, uh, much more so than the Canon M50 that I have or the Q2N, certainly. That thing kind of looks like a duck to me. <laughs> but uh, so this is what this looks like in the place. This is what this sounds like with the built in microphones. It is one heck of a device for podcasting, which is what I do, because you can just set it up and forget it. It'll record on this SD card. I've got a 128 gigabyte SD card in here. It'll go for 10 hours, no problem. So that's incredible. Now the battery won't last that long, but it has rechargeable batteries. You can replace them. I plug them into my Anchor power brick and I can basically go forever on this thing. So set it, forget it. It's got two XLR inputs as well. So in addition to using this, um, the, the XY mic, I think it is, whatever it is that I have on here right now. You can use other mics, lav mics, if you're doing an interview or that sort of thing. So it is quite a useful camera for many things, especially if you're close up like this. I think it looks fairly good. I'm in what's called, I think, ultra HD mode. It's like kind of approaching 4K, but not 4K, certainly. Uh, I really find it 
not comparing well to my Canon footage when I actually get in and start editing video, but I think for a lot of what people are doing for YouTube or just creating their own content or certainly for live stream, this is a good option. Now it is more expensive than the Q2N, but you get a few more features, quite a few more features actually. And so here's how it looks. I don't have the lens hood on by the way, and that does help with flare uh, from the sun and that kind of thing. So it definitely kind of freaks out in the sun. Another thing I've noticed is how much higher quality the resolution is for the actual screen on the Q8. Now, it looks like you're getting horrible footage on the Q2N 4K, but it's just that it's a low resolution screen. It's a tiny little postage stamp style kind of screen. So this is a nice big screen, feels more like you're shooting on a more professional camera. All right, now we're gonna check out my baby. What I picked up about a year ago, and I love it so much, it's the Canon EOS M50. I got it after being frustrated with that Q8 and doing some shopping, and it's just been wonderful for me. I have bought a bunch of lenses, I've invested a lot more money than I thought I would in this camera, but it just, I can't say enough good things about it. Even out of the box, it works great, but it's so expandable. And I am actually, right now, I never use this lens, but I thought I'd put on the 15 to 45 millimeter lens and I have it at 15, I can zoom in to 45 and you can see sort of how that looks. But even with the kit lens, it works quite well as a vlogging lens or for recording yourself. So I'll step outside so you can see how this holds up in sunlight and it actually looks like it's doing the best and I'm not surprised. Uh, I can also, of course, see myself because I have a flip out uh, screen for this one. So we have the same problems with all these cameras when we get really backlit, but just don't record yourself like that. So. I have a Rode VideoMic Pro on this camera, which is an additional, I think, $300. Let me take that off and show you what the in-camera audio sounds like. Okay, so here's the in-camera audio, just the built-in microphone, and here's a big disadvantage of getting something like the Canon if you're not going to upgrade and get a good microphone. There's where Zoom excels. Both the Q2N and the Q8 are just outstanding for audio. And as musicians, I mean, we are audio first. I, I hope, anyway. Um, you can get good audio with the Canon for sure, but you're gonna have to spend some money. But if you do spend the money for the Canon, and I think you can find this for around $500, just the camera body and the kit lens, uh, if you spend some money and get a decent mic and maybe invest in some other lenses, you're really going to be amazed at what you can do. Okay, we're back to the VideoMic Pro setup mounted on top of the camera, and I really like this microphone. They have some lower end Rode microphones also that I'll link to below, but I'm, I, and I think this is about $300, so it's a chunk of change, but it, really does a great job at capturing the subject and eliminating some background noise. I still think the zoom is probably going to work better audio wise, but if you're really trying to get a few levels up in terms of video and still get good audio, I have been loving Canon. So here's what I've also got in addition to the Rode VideoMic Pro. I have upgraded the lenses and I, like I said, I never really use this 15 to 45 millimeter lens. I have an 11 to 22 millimeter lens and that was several hundred dollars. It was not a cheap lens. And you think 11 to 22, 15 to 45, that's such a small difference, but actually those four millimeters make a big difference. So I'm gonna switch over to that and you can check out what that looks like. So here's the 11 to 22, and I had to close the door because of some background noise. So it might sound a little bit different, but it's the same mic on top of it. And I love this lens. It's just enough to get that sort of contemporary YouTube look that people like. It really, really allows you to do so much. You can get in nice and close. You can zoom out. The build quality is excellent. Is this a lens that everybody wants to throw down the several hundred dollars for? Probably not, but this is definitely looking a lot closer to the angle that you're seeing in the Q2N and the Q8, but it's going to be higher fidelity. Now, this does not perform wonderfully in low light either. So, you know, if we get to this darker area over here, it still looks better than the zoom, I think, and, and it's just a... It's just a higher end piece of gear. But uh, I love this lens. I read like 
500 reviews about it and almost bought it a bunch of times and finally did and I use it every single day. Now I have another lens that I really like and it's actually cheaper than this. It's only about $100, although you do have to get a mount for it. It's the Nifty 50, the Canon 50 millimeter lens, which on this camera body makes it a little bit more like an 80, I think, something like that, millimeter lens. And this thing is just great for like B-roll close-ups. It works great in low light. I've been using it for filming concerts. Uh, so I'm gonna put that on and I'm gonna have to move the camera away from me and you'll see why. So this is the Canon 50 millimeter. And again, I think this is more like an 80 millimeter because of the crop sensor on this camera and all that sort of thing. I love this lens and I have been using it to record concerts, to record indoor events. I've used it for photography. I turn it up to 60 frames per second and I shoot some really cool video that I slow down for YouTube. I just love it. Now, you're not hearing me as well right now because the camera's about six feet away from me. Let me move it to where it was for those other shots so you can see this is one of the challenges with this lens. So here is where that camera was placed before. This is way too close. We're all uncomfortable. Let me put it back to where it was. So if you end up using this, I mean, the sky's the limit. I am so glad that I got this lens and this adapter mount for this camera. This is a lot more expensive, what we're talking about, than the Q2N, but boy, it just gives you so many options. And if you're doing a lot of things in terms of video these days, and it's likely you're gonna be doing more, I think that all of this is money well spent. Now, what you need for this kind of setup, which I'm just not setting up here just to illustrate the problem, is you need to get a mic closer to you. Now, that could be a lavalier mic, and you can just get one that plugs into the camera body, uh, into the mic input. That's an option. You could have a second recorder that you're using to record your voice close. Uh, this shotgun mic I have on top of the camera does an okay job, but you can hear it's just not the right exact kind of audio setup. But if you have something else like the Q2N, you can use that as a microphone. Uh, you can put that on a stand and you can just mix the audio together later. So this lens is very cool. This Canon is very cool. Obviously a lot more money, but it's something you can upgrade over time. So you could start just with the camera body and the kit lens probably under $500 if you hunt around and yes that's more than the Q2N but you get a flip out screen you get higher quality glass you get uh, just a lot of expandability and if we look at that Q8 that I think I spent $400 for that I think it's still priced around that so the difference between the Canon with the kit lens and the Q8 is actually not that huge. Just a few things to think about. I think that this Q2N 4K is just a dynamite camera. I'm a fan. I uh, picked it up as kind of like a second camera and a webcam and it performs admirably. There are some quirks. I wish it had a screen that flipped out. It does feel a bit limited just in terms of what it can do, but hey, it's a $200 camera for that. What a bargain. Of course, how does it sound with an instrument? So here I am with my bass and we got the Canon M50 with the kit lens. I don't have the microphone on. This is just the raw camera input. We've got the Q2N in 4K using those microphones. We got the Q8. So here's just a test between all three of these. Okay, let's check out how the Q2N stacks up against the Q8 as a webcam and also the internal MacBook microphone and camera. And so you can sort of see here the setup I've got. I've got the Q8 right here. I've got the Q2N right here. I'm recording it on Zoom right here. And this shows you about how far away I am from the computer. So we'll switch over 
to the computer. So now this is my internal MacBook microphone and my internal camera. So I'm going to switch between these so you can just get a sense and these are as close as I can get them in terms of distance. Okay, so this is the Q2N 4K recording on Zoom, exactly the same placement. You can see we have a much wider angle here and uh, kind of a, you know, fish eye kind of look right here. We can step in a few times on it to get a little bit of that uh, beveling or whatever you, I forget what you call it, out of the picture. It is a digital zoom, so you're going to lose some quality, but that is an option for webcam. And I've actually done that with some conference calls just to sort of uh, get like the doorway out of the, out of the shot and everything. I am using the microphone on the Q2N right now. So you probably heard that the sound is a bit different using this. And right out of the box, everything worked. I could select this as a USB microphone. I could select it as a camera. If I had another microphone attached, I could use that instead. So that's great. So let's go over to the Q8 and check that out. Okay, here's the Q28, and I am out of tripods in my house, so I have this on a stack of books, but it's as close as possible to the other two lenses. I am using the Q8 microphones as well right now, and I've had this Q8 for about a year, maybe not quite, and I was a little freaked out at first because when I plugged it in to start using it as a webcam once the pandemic hit, it let me use it as a webcam or as a USB mic, but not both, which I thought was super weird. And turns out they didn't update. You can go to the Zoom website and there's a firmware update if you are having that same issue and it works just like the Q8. So a few advantages and disadvantages. I am looking through Zoom, so it's a little bit, I'll be able to tell when I look back at the video, but it does look like this is a little bit lower resolution than the Q2N. One of the nice things about this camera is that I I can see myself in the flip out screen. And that is really a useful feature for so many things. So that's something that you don't get on the Q2N. You're paying a couple hundred dollars more almost, depending on where you can find this in terms of price. So that's something to consider. Uh, it's a little bit of a trade off. This is a little bit of an older device, this Q8, but it's a, got a little bit more of a full feature device but I, it doesn't do 4K, and I really think that in, I'm in okay lighting here, not great lighting, but I really think that this camera struggles in lower lighting. Now, where it shines is the audio, and in addition to using the built-in microphones here, there are two XLR inputs I can use also, so it really gives you a lot of versatility. I love this thing for podcasting because I can set it up and forget it, and it's just a really useful device. Another thing I noticed watching back now is that, interestingly, the Q8 streams quite well onto Zoom. There's crazy lag for the Q2N. And I noticed that the other day I was trying another test and this is before I had updated the firmware on the Q8. So that's the second time that that's happened on the Q2N, which is a little bit concerning for streaming. So I'm gonna go over and try playing my bass now, flipping between the internal microphone and camera and the Q2N and the Q8. So let's check that out. All right, so here we are again on Zoom. I am on my MacBook built-in camera with the built-in sound right now. The lighting is okay. It's a bright sunny day. I'm not right in the ideal spot, but most people probably aren't going to be when they're doing this. I actually put a light on to help it out a little bit. It was really shadowy, uh, especially with one of the cameras, as you'll see. So this light helped a little bit, but you're still gonna be able to see a couple of issues visually. So I'm a bass player, as you can see, and a bass is particularly horrible for built-in mics, I'm discovering. So we're gonna go through, I'm gonna play a couple of different registers, especially some low notes, and we'll try it on this, we'll try it on the Q2, and we'll try on the Q8, and then I'll also break out my iPhone and use the built-in uh, microphone on that, because that's how a lot of people are going to be using Zoom, especially students. So here we go with the MacBook, internal mic, and internal camera.
Okay, here we are with the Q2N in both webcam mode and USB microphone mode. And these are extremely close to the MacBook right now, but you can see how different the angle is. You can also see the color that, uh, that you're getting a whole lot of color, a lot more pop, a lot more vibrancy in this, at least it looks like it from Zoom. Now I was having some lag before, so we'll just see if that lag continues right now. So we'll do the same thing on the bass. <laughs> Okay, so here's the video and the audio from the Q8. I'm using the Q8 microphones and I'm using the Q8 video. You can see how much darker this is, or at least it looks like coming through on my end. And again, we aren't in a terrible lighting situation here. I just tend to have this kind of result from the Q8. So it seems like it has less latency uh, through these multiple tests I've been doing over the last few days. And I've been using it as a webcam and it seems to be working pretty well. And again, I do like that flip out screen just to make sure I'm in frame. So here's how it sounds with the bass. <laughs> So here's how it sounds with the bass. Okay, okay so, so here we are on my iPhone, iPhone and you can see the light looks better on this than, 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 than uh, on everything, I think, except the H2N. Uh, let's check out the sound. So we'll play a little bass. Okay, I shot that footage a couple days ago, had the weekend to sort of think things over, and I'm writing up the blog post for this right now, and it occurred to me that I was using micro USB for the connection to the computer when I was doing those Zoom conferencing tests. I wasn't using the mini HDMI. I'm going to, I don't even think I have a mini HDMI around here, so I'm gonna order that, and I'm gonna see if the lag that I was getting, if that gets cleaned up using the HDMI. I'm suspecting that it might, but we'll see. So I figured I'd finish off this post vlogging a little bit on this little camera, the Q2N 4K. I really think this is a cool little camera. I love the form factor. It's such a quirky, tiny little thing. I think it's a good camera for a lot of people. It seems like it doesn't hold up quite as well as some of the other options I have for a webcam, but I think it's probably good enough for a lot of people. I think the video and audio are pretty sweet and I love how it performs in lower light, especially compared to the Q8. So I'm just gonna step outside. It's the afternoon here and it's pretty windy usually in the afternoon here in San Francisco, at least this time of year. So we can see wind is a little bit of an issue with this thing. So getting a little bit of noise here, I'm sure. But uh, if you put on some sort of dead cat or some sort of muffling <laughs> agent, you can probably cut that down. And maybe you're not planning on doing a whole lot of windy vlogging with this camera anyway. I'm impressed, I gotta say, the price point is great. It's one of those devices that I love because it's something that you can really use for many purposes. So yeah, you can use it for a webcam. Yeah, you can use it as a USB mic on your computer as well. You can record yourself doing live streams. You can use it to collect footage also, especially once we get out of this pandemic and recording concerts and that kind of thing. I think this is a great little thing to just throw in your bag and have with you. I'm loving it as a second camera, I'm loving it as a webcam, and I think it's a compelling offer at the price point. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.